You don't need an expensive sewing machine to complete a quilt, and today I'm going to prove it to you. I picked up this sewing machine from Walmart for just $88, and today I'm going to share some tips with you so that you would be able to use a machine like this or this exact one to complete a quilt. I'm going to share tips along the way, but at the end of this video, I'm also going to share with you my thoughts on the machine. So the things I liked and the things I maybe didn't like, just so you get an idea of what you might be looking at if you purchase a machine like this. So let's unbox it. All right, so here is the machine. I've cleared everything off of it and it is actually quite a cute machine with the detail. It's going to be very easy to use because you just have the knob here with all of the different stitches you can do. It's very basic. And Okay, so now that we have the sewing machine out of the box and set up, it's time to talk about the first tip that I'm going to give you. Since this machine does not have a quarter inch foot and Quilting, especially piecing quilts, often requires a quarter inch seam allowance to piece the quilt top. We'll definitely need to figure out a way to achieve that perfect quarter inch seam allowance. So to do that, I'm going to show you one of my favorite tools that I have in my sewing room and it is a seam guide. So this accurately will set up according to your needle where your seam allowance is comparative to the needle position. So I'm going to use this to figure out where the quarter inch seam allowance is on my machine and then I'm going to use some washi tape to mark that. So I will show you how to do that next. I did some test stitches and I did see that using the side of the foot here is not going to work because it is about a half an inch which does not work for what we're doing. So I have a, a seam allowance guide here and I need to set this up for me to get a quarter inch foot. So I'm gonna go to the quarter inch setting here and I'm gonna use my turn here, I can't remember what it's called to go down. And you see I have quite a bit of space here to get to where my quarter inch is. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some washi tape and I'm going to line that up there. Now, so I'm gonna put the tape right across where I need to be to get a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm gonna bring my needle back up and move. And so I'm not gonna line up next to the foot. I'm gonna line up next to the washi tape I put down. So my fabric's gonna be light right along there. Now it actually looks like a pretty good quarter inch stitch line. I'm going to, yeah, I think that that'll work. So one thing though, I don't like the way the stitch looks. It's a little longer than I would like. So I'm gonna go to eight and see if I like that better. The tape didn't seem to bother anything where it was. So let's do another line of stitches. All right, so let's try the back stitch. All right, so I definitely like that stitch length better for piecing and it's a little bit tighter together and I think it'll work better for piecing the quilt. I think we're getting a pretty good quarter inch seam and it doesn't seem that my tape being right there is affecting the feed dogs at all. So I think everything is set up and ready to go with starting to piece the quilt together. Now that we have this machine set up to sew an accurate quarter inch seam allowance, we're going to take a look at a, another common technique for piecing a quilt 
that you'll find a lot in patterns, and that is sewing half square triangles two at a time. Now, if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you know that I love using diagonal seam tape to sew my half square triangles. However, since this is a budget quilt on a budget sewing machine, I'm not going to be able to use this because it won't work quite right on this particular sewing machine. There's not enough table space area. So the second option we have is to just draw a line corner to corner on our squares. And I'm just using a number two pencil because this will wash off in the wash, but also it won't be seen because this is technically going to be the wrong side of my pieces anyway. I'm gonna draw it a little bit darker just so hopefully you can see it a little bit better on camera. Now, once we've drawn this line from corner to corner, what we would normally do is put it right sides together with the fabric that we're sewing a half square triangle with because when it's folded over, you'll have the two different colors here. Now, what we would do after putting this right sides together is go over to the sewing machine and line up our quarter inch foot right along the drawn line and then our stitches would be quarter inch away from the line. And we would do that on both sides of the line and cut down the middle. Then we would end up with two half square triangles. Since my sewing machine that I got on a budget does not have a quarter inch foot, we're gonna have to do this a little different. So we have our first line here down the middle of the block and what we're going to do is draw another line a quarter of an inch away from that line on both sides. It's going to be best if you have a pencil with a nice point because you see when I first started drawing it was a little farther away than it should be. This method is going to take a little bit of time, but for the sewing machine that we're using right now, it's going to be very, very accurate and we're going to get nice, accurate blocks. So what we're gonna do is put these right sides together and we're going to sew along the two outer lines from that center line and then after we sew along those, we're going to cut down the middle line. And that'll give us two half square triangles after we press them. So I have a bit of squares here that I'm gonna have to draw a bunch of lines on. Like I said, it's going to be a little bit time consuming, but it'll be worth it to get the perfect blocks. All right, so I have all of my half square triangles prepped and now it is time to sew them. Now, again, we're going to be sewing right along the drawn outer lines and cutting the middle. Now, to do this, you're going to want to line your needle directly up on your drawn line. To help you, there's a little etched dash in this particular foot for the zigzag stitch. So if you get that lined up with the line, it'll help you stay lined up nicely. And then I'm just gonna sew right along that line. All right, bring my needle back up. So I'm gonna line that etched line right along my marked line and sew straight across there. All right, so now I have one finished. All I would need to do is cut down that line and press my half square triangles open. Now, if you have become curious about the quilt pattern I am working on when showing how to use this machine to piece a quilt, rest assured I will be showing this pattern soon. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel and you'll see the tutorial for this quilt pattern come up soon. Now that I have shared some tips and hacks for using this sewing machine to piece a quilt top, I am going to move on to sharing 
how to quilt on a machine like this and also add the binding. All right, so I have the quilt basted. So I have the top of the quilt facing up, a layer of batting, and then the backing fabric here. And then what I also like to do when I get ready to quilt a quilt is I like to make a little kind of mini sample quilt. So it has the same backing fabric I'm using, the same batting I'm using, and some fabric from the top of the quilt. This will kind of help me know what my stitches will look like before I start quilting on this quilt. So I'm gonna run this few, through the sewing machine a few times with some different stitch options to see which one I like the best. Something else I always like to use when I am quilting a quilt is some grippy gloves. You can get quilt gloves. These are some Gorilla Grip Tracks that I got at the hardware store. I really love the way these fit and I'm actually really liking them better than the uh, quilt gloves that I have. So I'm gonna take this over, run it through a few times, we'll take a look at it, and I'm gonna choose the stitch length that I would like to use for this quilt. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to stitch through here using the stitch number I already had set up. So on this sewing machine right now, I have it on number seven, so Six is the tightest set of stitches um, for a straight stitch, straight stitch. So seven was one up from that. So this is stitch seven and it's a little tighter than I would like for it to be, but it does look really good on the front and back. And this is the thread that I plan to use when I quilt this out as well. So I'm not going to change out to a different thread color. So I'm using exactly what I will be using to quilt the machine. So I'm going to move up to eight and see how that looks. I actually really like this stitch size. So and it looks good on the front and the back. So I'm gonna go up to nine just to see, but I think eight is definitely a good contender. So nine isn't bad either. It looks really good. I do think I prefer the look of eight though. Um, but this is a nice way because, you know, this is just what I like, but this is a nice way for you just to take a look and see what might work on your quilt and, you know, make sure that you're happy with the stitches before you get too far in the quilt. So I think I'm going to go back to eight. I think I really liked that one the best. So now that I have decided on that, we're going to see how we're going to try to get this quilt quilted on this little machine. All right, so one of the trickiest parts of getting a quilt like this through a machine is figuring out how to move it through. The throat space isn't very large on my machine that I'm using today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll the quilt up along one side and kind of get to the middle of it. And then what I'll do is put this kind of rolled portion of the quilt through the throat space and I'm just going to start sewing some straight lines through the middle of the quilt, but I definitely want you to kind of get an idea of how it would look and work. I'm going to start off the quilt, the quilt top on the batting so that if my bobbin thread wants to bunch all up, it's not right under the quilt so I can trim that off when I trim up the quilt. So I'm just going to start quilting across here. And it's actually not as hard as I thought it would be on this machine. It's running pretty smoothly. I think I, I picked a good stitch length for this layer of fabric that I have. It's handling all the seams with pretty good ease. The hardest thing is going to be maneuvering the quilt under here. I probably wouldn't do try and do too large of a quilt on this machine. 
This was honestly the part that I was worried about the most because I don't have a lot of surface area here to work with. And the throat space is pretty small, but I have half of the quilt rolled up under here and I actually do have a bit more room. So you could probably go a little bit larger. I wouldn't go too much larger though. And you can see I'm moving a little bit through and stopping so that I can adjust what's up on the table area of the sewing machine. And I have a lot of the extra fabric pulled up onto me holding it so it's not dragging. All right, so I got to the edge. So I'm going to raise up the needle and pull the fabric to the side. Along the side of the sewing machine here is a thread cutter, so I'm just going to use that. And then I'm going to pull the quilt back around to sew along the next portion that I would like to sew. All right, so I got to the end of the row of stitches again, and here is, you can see through there how they are looking. So I'm really happy with how they look. I'm gonna keep sewing through here, and I will give you some close-ups of the quilting when I get some more of it done, so you can kind of see that. All right, so I have the quilt quilted and I actually really really like how the stitches turned out. I thought they turned out really beautiful for a sewing machine that just cost $88. So I'm quite happy about how that looks. Now I have the binding for the quilt made here and that is going to get sewn to the back of this quilt. So I'm going to align the raw edges of my binding with the raw edge of the quilt on the back. And I'll start a little bit away from the tail and start sewing along the binding. I'm gonna sew about a quarter inch seam, so I'm gonna use that tape as a guide again to go all the way around the quilt. Then I'll join the ends of the binding together and flip the binding over to the front and I'll show you how I'm going to stitch that onto the front of the quilt when I get there. All right, so I have the binding sewn to the back and flipped over to the front to tack down with some stitches. So usually I will use an eighth inch foot and stitch right along the edge here. On the sewing machine that I'm using right now, I don't have an eighth inch foot for it and there's not a great eighth inch marking. So what I'm going to do is use the groove in the middle of the foot that I'm using to line up with the edge of the binding right over here. And it should give me about an eighth of an inch away uh, stitch. So I'm gonna head over the, to the sewing machine and stitch all the way around this and this quilt will be finished. After I finish it up, I'm going to give you a list of things that I liked about this sewing machine and things I missed from my regular sewing machine just to give you an idea of the kind of pros and cons of this machine. All right, so I finished the quilt that I made using the budget sewing machine that I purchased for $88 from Walmart. I'm actually quite pleased with how well it turned out using this machine. I wasn't sure what the results would be, but I think it was pretty, pretty good. Now, this is a smaller quilt. It finishes at about 40 and a half inches square. So it's not a really large quilt. So keep that in mind if you want to use a machine like this to complete a quilt.
All right, so let's get into the things that I liked about this sewing machine and then the things that I didn't like about the machine or that I missed from my Juki sewing machine. So the first thing I liked was that this is a very budget-friendly priced machine. It has quite a lot of features for a machine that's just $88. So there's a lot of different thread options, and then you can add on some different feet for the sewing machine and things like that. So I am quite pleased with how, much, how well this machine worked for the price. The second thing that I really liked about the machine that was that it was really easy to set up. Um, there wasn't like a complicated way to thread the machine. Now with my Juki, I definitely had to look at how to thread it, how to use the thread, um, the needle threader and different things like that. Um, it wasn't very intuitive, I felt. This was really easy. It has little diagrams everywhere for how to set up the bobbin, um, to wind it. It has uh, a lot of different diagrams on how to thread it. So it was very easy to set up. Another thing that I liked about this machine was that it has a clear bobbin case down here. So as I sew, I can easily see if I'm about to run out of thread. Uh, I've made a bunch of jokes before with my Juki that I'll just sew and sew and sew and not realize that the bobbin thread is out and I haven't actually been sewing. Uh, with this, it's really easy to notice when the thread is getting low so you can make sure to keep an eye on it. Another thing I liked about this machine is that the dial to choose the thread, the stitch that you want is very, very intuitive and easy to use. You just twist it and line it up with the thread um, with the stitch that you are looking for. I also really like there's a couple different straight stitch options that are different lengths and it's really easy just to look at it and kind of tell what thread uh, option you may want. So another thing that I really liked about this machine and that I thought was really nice was that the stitches were really, really beautiful. I was actually surprised at how pretty the simple straight stitch was and especially how pretty it was with the different options. There weren't any tension issues that I noticed when I was uh, setting it up for quilting or anything like that. So I was quite pleasantly happy with how beautiful the stitches are with this machine. And I actually really liked them a lot more than even the Bernina I used to have, which really surprised me because that was a pricey machine. All right, so let's move on to what I didn't love about this machine. And I can honestly say for the price point and what I was expecting, there's only one thing that I didn't like, and that was how loud the machine was. This sewing machine is pretty loud for its little petite size. I couldn't believe that it was even louder than my Juki, which is a big um, heavy duty machine. Uh, even my husband pointed out that he thought it was really loud because he usually doesn't hear me up here sewing. I'm on the second floor. I'm the only one up here. Um, it's kind of like a half second floor loft type area, but it has a door. It's all closed off and he could hear me downstairs in the office and his office isn't actually even right below this room. So it quite surprised me that he mentioned how loud this machine is. Now, that is the only thing that uh, really stood out to me about this machine. It is a basic sewing machine, and there was a lot of features that I missed that aren't on this machine that are on my Juki machine, but it's honestly not something I expected it to have for the price point. So if you are in the market for a machine and have a little bit more to spend, a few things that I missed on this machine is one, the thread cutter. My Juki machine has a little button that I can press and it cuts the threads and it makes it so easy to move on and keep sewing. And I also don't have to pull out the fabric from under, from under the machine and snip the threads. And I feel like I'm often wasting a lot of thread having to do that. Did I expect that feature on this machine? Absolutely not, but it is something that I missed. Another feature that I missed was not having the knee lift. On the Juki, I just have this little bar that I slide into the machine and I use my knee to raise and lower the presser foot. And 
I found myself wanting to hit the bar when I was using this machine and uh, raise the presser foot so I could move things around. And I kept realizing I don't have that option right now when I'm working on this machine. Uh, did I expect it? No. But just to point out a few things that, you know, you may want to look for in a machine if you have a little more to spend. Another thing that I definitely noticed on the machine is not having a lot of throat space here to work a quilt through. Was there enough for the size quilt I was doing? Absolutely. But it definitely is nice having all that extra movement. So the last thing that I noticed on this machine that I would definitely want if it was going to be a machine that I was making a lot of quilts on is the ability to raise and lower the presser foot. Um, that comes in really handy if I'm working on a quilt that is thicker and bulkier. Raising up the presser foot really helps me move the quilt around under the foot and not have it, you know, distort or move the fabric a lot as I'm quilting. It was fine on the quilt that I did because I didn't use a really thick or lofty batting and there wasn't a lot of places where a lot of seams met and it got really bulky there. But definitely if you're going to be making a lot of quilts, that's something to look at. But I do think that for the price, this is a really nice machine. If you have maybe a child or a grandchild that is wanting to learn how to sew, it would be a really good starter machine. And I also think a fun sewing machine for travel and going to retreats if you don't have a kind of lighter uh, sewing machine to travel with because some of the machines that we have are very heavy, very big, and very expensive. And I honestly wouldn't want to travel with mine. So just an idea to keep in mind on what you might want to look at when you're looking for sewing machines. And I thought it was a great machine for the price. I honestly did. I was very surprised. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for a machine that is a little bit more budget friendly for whatever reason it might be, Hopefully you found this video helpful. So let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know what sewing machine you are eyeing. And if there are any sewing machines you want me to take a look at, I would love to know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.